Hello everybody, this is um, the Gas Law Summary Worksheet for AWC's General Chemistry 1 or Chem 151. And this, um, in this video we're just going to go over some of the gas laws that are learned in General Chemistry 1, describe them, what their definitions are, and we'll have a couple practice problems about how to use them. And so the first one we're going to start with is Boyle's Law. Now the interesting thing about Boyle's Law is that Boyle's Law is actually an indirect relationship. And the equation we have is P1V1 is equal to P2V2. If we were to graph this out, we would have something like this. This is non-linear. Okay. A sort of textbook-ish definition might be that it's a indirect relationship. between volume and pressure. I might describe it, on the other hand, as, let me change colors really quick. Let's see if this pops up. As, can you see that? Yes. As the uh, amount of space increases the pressure of the object decreases and I, I think of this as like a lung so when we have you know this doesn't really look like a lung at all but as the lung expands we have an increase in volume and a decrease in pressure and as that lung decreases we have a decrease in volume and an increase in pressure then we have Charles's law. Charles's law, we're having a direct relationship, and and we're looking at volume and temperature. So our equation looks like this: V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. Sorry about that. And this is a linear relationship. So this is sort of what our graph would look like, and we would call this a direct relationship between volume, I'm just abbreviating now, between volume and temperature. I might say that this is, I might describe it rather as the amount of energy, right? Because we talk about temperature, we're talking about the amount of energy, I'm sorry, that molecules give off as they move around. So it's the amount of energy of a substance increases. And I'm abbreviating increase with my like arrows like that. The temperature, I'm sorry, as the amount of energy of a substance increases, now we're talking about temperature, the space between molecules increases too. Uh, I like to think of this, you can think of it like a hot air balloon, but also like um, maybe we have a pot over fire, and this is why I'm not an artist, you know, you can see my really bad art. Um, and that over time, as we heat this up, right, so this is time, increase in time, we have these molecules that were now liquid, now they're starting to turn into gas, and so we actually have more volume of, uh, of, the, of the molecules themselves. Now, we also have Gay-Lussac or Amantan. So this is the third one. Um, it, either one works. This is also a direct relationship. So we're going to see the, uh, the graph looking like this. This is linear. And this will be V... Um, I think, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. P1 over T1 equal to P2 over T2. So a direct relationship between temperature, my abbreviation, and pressure. So um, I would probably say under ISO volumetric, ah, I guess ISO volumetric, that means same volume throughout conditions. Pressure of an ideal gas is proportional 
to temperature of an ideal gas. And um, another, I like to think about tire pressure when I try to think of an image. So like as, as, you, as you heat up in a tire, it might start off at um, 32 psi, pounds per square inch. But as you heat that up, that pressure in the tire can increase to 35 psi. Not a huge increase, but definitely increase in pressure as, as time goes by and we increase the temperature of the tire through friction. Then we also have Avogadro's Law, which is a direct relationship. And so this is also linear. And this is where we're looking at V1 over N1 is equal to V2 over N2. A direct relationship between volume and number of moles. I might describe this as uh, that the gas at a certain temperature under isobaric, same pressure, and isovolumetric, same volume conditions will have the same number of moles. I'm abbreviating here, same number of moles. So I like to think of it though, when, we, when I think of an image is maybe like a faucet. So we have a faucet here and maybe like a, a water balloon. So as we increase that, we're increasing that volume and we increase the moles, the number of moles. We also have Henry's law, which is another direct proportion. It's linear. P1 over S1 is equal to P2 over S2. A direct relationship between pressure and solubility. So I might say the amount of gas that dissolve in a liquid, that's where we have our solubility, increases or decreases due to pressure change. Think of that can of soda that you might leave out. And so the solubility is what causes the, the fizz of a soda. And I'm sorry, I didn't realize you can see this. Is what causes the fizz of the soda. And as you let it go out and the pressure decreases from being pressurized in the can, so does the solubility. Now the last one is the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. P being pressure, volume being, uh, being V, N being the number of moles, R being our uh, constant, and T being our temperature. And let's look, take a look at this constant, 0 0.08206 when we're in L ATM over moles Kelvin. So keep in mind that you can't use this unless your temperature is in Kelvin, which it always should be right in a gas law. N is in moles, obviously, volume is in liter, and P pressure is an ATM. This is a relation of pressure, volume, number of moles, and temperature, all related to gas. My own definition is kind of a cop-out, just that the law, it has all the variables in it. We typically think about this um, sometimes when we're solving for, for moles, and so we could just use that instead of having to plug it in and doing some, like, you know, this is just a straightforward equation. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about, um, if I can find my page, 
in relation to, to the gas laws is what we're actually using when we're talking about uh, Tor and that, uh, that stuff. Let me see if I can pull it down here. Oh, there we go. 760 Tor is equal to 1 atm, which is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury, which is equal to 101 kilopascals, which is equal to 101.325 pascals, which is equal to 1013 m-bars, and that's equal to 14.7 psi. Just be familiar with some of the units of pressure, and obviously then how to convert between them. Now let's just say this is a very straightforward ideal gas equation, PV equals nRT. So we have our pressure, right, it's 2 atm. We have our volume, 6 liters. We have our um, constant, 0 0.08206 L ETM over moles Kelvin. And we have our temperature, 373 Kelvin. So let's rearrange this to find the moles of gas using our N is equal to PV over RT. That's what it looks like, and that's an N, I'm sorry. N uh, is equal to 2 ATM times 6 liters over 0 0.08206 LATM over mole times Kelvin times 373 Kelvin. So let's put that on the calculator. So 2 times 6, let's see, can you see it, right? Uh, divided by 0 0.08206 times 373, we get um, N is equal to 3 Point nine times 10 is the negative 1. We could check that, so we could say 12, oops, 12 divided by 0 0.08206 times 3.73, and we get the same, we get the same answer. Sorry, it wasn't in the middle. Anyway, and so times 10 to the negative 1. And what we see is, what we're left with is moles, because we've canceled out ATM, we've canceled out liters, and we've canceled out Kelvin. And so that's how you would solve something like that. Even if it, this is a little, um, may seem a little extreme, moles are again very tiny, uh, can be very tiny depending on the amount that you have to begin with. So that's just an introduction to gas laws. We'll go into it into more detail, but this is uh, the form that I use just as a summary to capture all those gas laws that we're predominantly learning. This is definitely something to memorize that efficient gas law coefficient. Um, because it's commonly used throughout the, the gas loss part. So thank you for watching, and this is the end.